Hey there, welcome to my Achieve Even More show. I hope you are doing great. And today I'm gonna to be talking about five tips to developing a business growth mindset. So do you have a business? Do you wanna develop a business growth mindset? Do you think you can actually achieve a business growth mindset? So if you think you can achieve a business growth mindset and you can actually develop it, let me know and just type in or like or do something uh, and let me know that, uh, yeah, it's possible. I'm gonna give you five tips today. And uh, what I can share with you in having built five multi-million dollar companies uh, over the last 40 years uh, is that you can train to build a business growth mindset. I had mentors who taught me exactly how to think, they taught me what to do, and they taught me that I can achieve just about any level of success that I wanted to achieve in business if I was willing to do the right things in the right order at the right time. Do you agree that most people never learn how to build a business and that's why they don't do as well? <clears throat> is it possible that building a business is a function of learning some skills, right? Is it possible that learning how to grow a business or growing a business is a matter of uh, developing some skills? Um, I think that most business owners make huge mistakes um, in trying to figure it out on their own. And, um, you know, I have, uh, many of you know, I love Rubik's Cubes. And um, if you go on to um, YouTube, you can learn how to solve this Rubik's Cube in like three or four minutes. But if you try and figure it out yourself, uh, it'll take you um, God knows how many uh, months or years uh, because most people don't want to learn the algorithms. Right, so do you know the algorithms to building a business? Uh, let me say hello to a few of you. Hi there, he trenda, he hit rendra, Jesse Morton. Hey Jesse, uh, Sasan. Hello, Jackie Barkdahl. Good morning, Jackie. Brian Peterson. Uh, good morning, uh, Ash K Roselli. Uh, I'm on uh, Instagram and on Facebook at the same time. Uh, how many of you use both platforms? I'm going to give you five tips. I wrote five of them out. Uh, for you that I think are critical to get this mindset piece right. If you can hear me and see me well on Facebook, let me know on Facebook. If you can hear me uh, and see me well on Instagram, just hit a like or a love. John, I can hear you. And thank you for being a big fan. All right. Um, so um, business, business growth. How many people go to business growth school? How many people go to business growth school? Um, Hardly anybody. How many people go to uh, medical school or to engineering school, uh, you know, or to um, uh, law uh, school, right? How many people? Hey there, Julian Chambers. Nice to see you, young man, right? How many people go to business growth school? So I want you to think about something. Tip number one, all right, around um, business growth, right? This is all about the five tips to develop a business growth mindset. Not just starting a business, because anybody could do that, but a business growth mindset. Number one, ask yourself this question. Is a business similar to a team? A team. So if you have a, a hockey team, um, a baseball team, um, or even a band, there's different members you know, of the team, whether it's a forward or defenseman or center, uh, whether it's a, a pianist, uh, somebody who's playing the trombone or the guitar, there are different players on the team that do different things. I mean, they're all playing music, but they're playing a different instrument. And in business, most business owners don't know their position. Most business owners, all right, think of a business because they like a product or a service that they have and they say, I'm gonna offer that product or service to people in the marketplace. But they don't understand that a business is just like a team. And the first question I ask all of my private clients is what position are you playing on your team? Like what position are you playing? Are you playing, you know, the marketing person? Are you playing the sales person? Are you playing the legal person, the finance person, the product development person? Are you playing the uh, manager? What position are you playing? 
And here's what you discover is most business owners are trying to play too many positions, right? They're trying to play too many positions and they are not skilled at playing all of the positions. Is it possible that one of the tips to becoming a business growth leader and mindset, one of the tips is A, know your position and know how to get all the other positions done. Your job is not to do everything, all right? Your job is to make sure everything gets done. So your first tip, okay, um, uh, and I'm doing, for those of you who just joined, five tips to developing a business growth mindset, not a business starting mindset, a business growth mindset. Your job as tip number one is what position am I supposed to play? What should all the other positions do? And how do I, as the owner of the business, get all the other stuff done? All right. How many of you know what I'm talking about for tip number one? Does that make sense first and foremost? Your job is almost like a conductor, you know, of an orchestra. The conductor knows what the music is supposed to sound like. The conductor knows how to raise this a little bit, lower that a little bit, get people to play in harmony, right? Get people to play in harmony, get the musician to play in harmony. If all the musicians are playing out of coherence or out of harmony, then guess what you have? You have chaos, you have noise, but you don't have a lot of coherence. So when I got into um, uh, selling real estate 40 years ago, I was 19, I'll be 59 next month. When I got into selling real estate, um, the first thing that my mentor, my coach taught me was know your position. And he says, in real estate, your position is to market and sell. And because I worked for somebody at the time, um, his job was to do everything else. But I was supposed to be marketing and selling, and that's what I got really good at. So do you know your position? How many of you, by the way, have uh, a business? Let me know if you have a business. Hey, Jesse Morton. Hello, Carola. Hi, Sasan. All right, how many of you have a business? Do you have a business, whether you're in India? Uh, where are you? By the way, where are you from? I see there's some people in India, from India right now. Uh, do you have a business? Right, so you need to you need to um, you need to know your position. Okay, so that's tip number one. Can somebody type in tip number one? Is know your position, and in a sidebar also um, put in brackets. You also need to know how to get the other positions done. All right, and I know a lot of you are saying, but I don't have the money to do it. Well, then you have to barter with people. You have to. Um, uh, um, um, partner with people or you defer payment to people. In the absence of resources, you have to be resourceful. There's another little sidebar tip. In the absence of resources, you have to be resourceful, okay? Um, so this, that was number one. Number two, all right, um, is hiring the best you can afford. Now, when people have a business, it doesn't matter if it's a startup or it's a new business, most business owners that I talk to are trying to get the cheapest people, the least expensive people. And a business growth mindset is what's the most I can afford for the talent that I need. A lot of people think that Hiring people is easy and managing people is easy and incentivizing people is easy. No, it's not. No, it's not. You want to hire people, not people who can do the job, okay, because you're teaching them. You want to hire the best people that already know how to do the job. When you hire people who already know how to do the job, you're gonna save yourself one to three years of a learning curve for somebody to do a job properly. One to three years. It takes a senior person 100 days to get up to speed in a company. In a smaller company, all right, you wanna be focusing on, this is tip number two, what is the most I can afford to pay the right people. What's the most I can afford instead of what's the least I can pay the right people. Does that make sense? What most business owners do not think about 
is how long it takes to, um, to recruit, train, and manage people. And what most business owners don't understand is what is the cost of hiring the wrong people that then you have to part ways with and then hire again. 50% of all hires are the wrong hires. And so when you can hire somebody or barter or defer payment or partner with somebody who already knows how to do what you need to do, you're gonna be further down the road. So instead of thinking about, you know, what's the least I can get somebody for? A growth-minded business owner thinks about what's the most I can afford to get the greatest amount of talent on my team. If you were recruiting, you know, um, a band, if you were recruiting, you know, um, a, a, a sports team, would you look to see who's the cheapest I can get, who's the least experienced I can get, or who's the best I can get, right? And so it's one of the biggest mistakes that business owners make is they not only don't know how to hire the right people, but uh, a lot of times they're looking to pay the least amount. Does that make sense? First and foremost, let me know if it makes sense. Hi there, Janine. Hi there, Kelly Lee. And hi there, Nasserine. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. All right. So that was number two. So tip number one is know your position on the team. Uh, tip, tip number two is hire the best, most talented that you can afford. Okay. Um, number three. Number three is... Think process versus ad hoc. Think process versus ad hoc. Let me explain. Why do people buy franchises? Why do people spend $25,000, $50,000, $100,000, $500,000 dollars for a franchise? Why? Are they buying it because of the brand only? Well, the brand is worth something, okay? A brand is worth something, but if you think about any business, whether it's changing tires, changing oil, a restaurant business, a printing company, there are so many moving pieces, right? Sales, marketing, management, finance, legal, product development, customer service, technology, online, offline. There's hundreds of moving pieces, okay, in a company. Even if you're a small company, a one person or two person or three person or 10 person shop. So why do people spend so much money or invest so much money? Ah, Luann, you've got it. Because the systems, the processes of what to do, what not to do are already there. So when you're paying for a process or a system, is that a smart thing to do? Or is it smarter to try and figure it out on your own? Which is, which is a smarter thing to do? Pay for a system or figure it out on your own? If you want a growth mindset, right? Hi, Malin, right? If you want a growth mindset, then any time that you can pay for a system or a process that has been tried and tested, then you are gonna be further ahead because you don't have to figure it out. It's basically paint by number, right? It's do this, then that, then this, then that. And in a franchise, um, you're paying for a system that in many cases, you know, hundreds or thousands of other franchisees have already figured out and tweaked. So you're able to just do this instead of that. You don't have to think about uh, what needs to be done. And so, when you are um, in business, do you have a process for generating leads, right? Do you have a process for qualifying those leads? Do you have a process for making a sale? Do you have a process, okay, for hiring? Do you have a process for managing? Do you have a process for um, uh, all of your marketing, your branding? If you don't have a process, that means that you have to figure it out. Most business owners underestimate how many hours it takes to figure something out that they don't have the skill to do. And that's why I go back to hire the best people that you can afford. Hey there, Eric, buddy. Right, hire the best people that you can afford, all right, instead of the cheapest people that you can afford, right? So when you focus on 
your systems and your processes, that's what's going to give you the leverage, all right, to build it once and then implement and scale. Does that make sense? So number one, we've had um, know your position on your team. Number two, we've talked about hire the best you can afford. Number three, think in terms of process and system versus what should I do? I don't know how to do this. How do you build it once and then implement it on an ongoing basis? So that is uh, number three. Does that make any sense to, to all of you? Most business people are not process driven. Most business owners you know, have a product or a service, but they don't create processes and systems. And one of the reasons is the part of the brain that is responsible for creating processes and systems is the structural part of their brain. And most people don't have uh, a very highly developed structure, you know, A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Some people are analytical, but not structural. And systems and processes is how an engineer thinks. Most business owners don't think like an engineer. They don't think of the nuts and the bolts that fit into everything. And so it's a very difficult thing for most business owners to do. And so what do you do when you don't have the processes and systems? Um, it goes back to the last um, comment that I made in the last tip was hire the best that you can. Um, but it also is around number four, which is always be learning. Always be learning, okay, about business growth and business processes and systems. If you have a business, right, then your job as the CEO of me.com or of, you know, your particular business is your, it's your job to know the positions. It's not your job to do all the positions, but it's your job to know all the positions. How many of you are always learning? Like how are you learning about your business, about sales and about marketing and about management and finance and hiring and, and, and incentivizing your team? Are you learning about business? I invest about one hour a day, every single day, to read about business growth, to read about branding, to read about different uh, tools and technologies for leverage. Are you doing that? Are you investing an hour a day to level up your business knowledge and skills, right? So if you're not, um, guess what? You're not gonna do as well as you can, all right? So does anybody have all four of the tips so far? I've got uh, one more, um, and this is, uh, this is a biggie, and it also, uh, it also ties right into um, number, um, number two, right? So you're always learning, Luann, are you always learning about your business growth? I'm not talking about learning about health. Oops, let me see, I'm talking about, are you always learning about business growth, right? One hour a day, if you're a CEO of one or two or three or four people, um, then are you learning? Are you upgrading your knowledge and your skills, right? Okay, so that is number, number four. And then number, number five that I wrote down for you, is somebody can, uh, can one of you or all of you type this in, PPP equals PPP, PPP, PPP equals PPP, all right, PPP equals PPP, and I uh, just wanna make sure that um, somebody gets this and that uh, we're streaming live right now from San Diego, all right, I've got a few friends on here and a few clients, so you love to learn, awesome. So PPP equals PPP. So piss poor planning, piss poor planning equals piss poor performance. Piss poor planning equals piss poor performance. Now, when we talk about uh, what kind of planning, piss poor planning equals piss poor performance. I'm gonna come back to um, you know a sports team do you think that the coach of the sports teams that want to win do some planning? 
And then do you think that they execute the plan and then tweak and adjust? Or do you think they all show up to practice or to a game and they go, just do whatever you feel like doing today. We don't have a plan. 99 out of 100 businesses that I consult with, all right, 99 out of 100 do not have a plan that they are executing. They show up, uh, they do whatever, you know, um, comes up uh, on the day. Uh, they're responding to texts, to emails, to uh, whatever might be happening on social media, and there's no plan for business growth. They have activities, don't get me wrong. They have lots and lots and lots of activities but rarely are they productive, active but not productive. Or they take three steps forward and two steps back, but there isn't time for planning. So let me give you a little tip. Every month, invest two to three hours on planning the next month. The, the way it really should work is every year you should plan about three days to set the course for the year just to set the course for the next year. Then you need to develop the plan for each of the objectives and the goals. And then every month you take a look at what you're doing for that next month in sales and marketing and finance and management uh, and lead generation and lead qualification and knowing your numbers, what's working, what isn't. So if you set your plan in advance for a whole year, then every month you spend two or three hours or invest two or three hours, okay, reviewing your plan and your progress, like the captain of a ship would if, you know, she was going across the ocean or the pilot, okay, of a plane that's going across the Atlantic or the Pacific, it doesn't matter. They're always checking against a plan. So, Piss poor planning leads to piss poor performance because then you are reacting instead of using your plan to guide what you should be doing. And so those are five of the tips that are you know, consistently coming up when I work with business owners. Uh, many of you already know this because um, you're in some of my uh, programs, but on Thursday night this week, I'm doing a live training, it'll be about 75 minutes to an hour and a half on um, uh, the three keys to building a six or seven figure a year business. Um, I don't know if you um, signed up for it already, but I'll ask my team to put up a link for you. It's free. And I'm going to be doing about a 75 minute presentation on the three keys um, to building a six or seven a year uh, figure a year business. How many of you want to build at least a hundred thousand dollar a year business? Let me know. Uh, or if you want to build a million dollar business, let me know. All right. Um, my team will put up a link on Instagram, uh, but also on um, uh, on Facebook. And uh, that's the wrong link. Uh, just so you know, Alan. Okay, I uh, shared that with um, Travis the other day. But anyway. Uh, if you, uh, let me see, we got Donato Millions. Good. How many of you want to build at least a six-figure year, $100,000 a year business? Hey, Ben, nice to have you on. All right? how many of you want to build a million-dollar a year business? If you don't have a business, then the event that I'm going to do Thursday night for free is not for you. Uh, Monique, a lot of people do not. Uh, a lot of people want to, but a lot of people are not committed to. So do we want to go through the five, um, five tips? So... Um, Tip number one was you've got to know your position. Um, tip number two was hire the best you can afford, not the cheapest. Uh, tip number three uh, was think process and systems versus ad hoc. Tip number four is always be learning one hour a day of business growth. By the way, one hour a day focusing on your business equals nine 40 hour weeks. Nine 40-hour weeks, if you just invested one hour a day, that's over two months of focus on your business. One hour a day. How good would you get if you invested one hour a day in your business growth, right? 
Uh, and then um, number five was PPP equals PPP. So piss poor planning equals piss poor performance. And so if you don't invest any time planning and executing a plan, I can guarantee you your performance is gonna be subpar. All right? All right, so Drew, um, my hourly fees are $5,000. So you can fly here, and um, but it's $5,000 to work with me for an hour. 35,000 for eight hours. Uh, that's the drill for today. All right, so if you want some uh, more advanced training than five tips, uh, sign up for the uh, free event on, uh, on Thursday, and uh, I'll show you the um, three keys to growing a six or seven figure a year business. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Was this worth your time? If it was, uh, do me a favor and share it. And uh, let me also know, what else would you like me to be uh, teaching on these uh, Achieve Even More sessions, right? What would you like me to be teaching? Give me, give me a couple of topics that you would like me to, uh, to cover, all right? Uh, all right, and so it will be on Instagram. Look in my bio and the links will be there, all right? And uh, on Facebook, the link is right in the chat and it should be pinned. So what would you like me to, uh, to, uh, to share, to teach you? Uh, the inner game stuff, the outer game stuff. It's inner game plus outer game equals predictable success. All right, so let me see, building teams. Hi, Janine, teaching you about marketing. So sign up off for Thursday night. All right, what would you like to, to know? So is there any, any topic that you want me to cover? All right, the inner game stuff, how to deal with nasty people in your business, self-confidence, emotional intelligence. Great. All right, driven mindset, Kelly Lee. Hi, Sandy, you're always in the game. Dealing with losses and setbacks, leadership, marketing, reaching out, team building, love it. Be basic business marketing. How many of you don't have a business? Right? How many of you do not have a business? Just curious. Daily planning, Brian, awesome. How many of you do not have a business that, uh, that are watching right now? And did you, you probably learned something about business, right? Business can be the royal road to financial freedom. Business can be the royal road to financial freedom. How do you attract money and confidence? Well, first you get confidence and then you earn money. You don't attract money, okay? Money is not some elusive thing that you know, just falls onto your lap. So first and foremost, get, get it out of your head that you attract money. That's like saying, you know, I attract uh, leaves. Uh, you don't do that. Overcoming worthless beliefs. Awesome, thank you. You don't have a business yet, uh, Bishnu, okay, All right? So you don't have a business, Fabian. Actually, we have two people on Instagram and on Facebook at the same time going, I don't have a business yet, right at the same time. Come back from failure. Just remember, setbacks are made for comebacks. Good, I got a lot of good stuff here. Balance of life and money, Fabian. Uh, awesome. Milica, no real business. Libya, new business, less than a year. Okay, awesome. Come back from failure. Great, okay, we got a lot of um, uh, good stuff here for business owners. Sometimes I do stuff for business owners, other times I don't. About 65% of my audience has a business and 35% doesn't, so that's, uh, that's great. So uh, Denver, how to survive your business in this pandemic, financial education, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, uh, got a lot, lots of great stuff for you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, share it. Uh, and uh, if you didn't, so sorry. Have a great day, everyone. I appreciate you. All right, this is the Achieve Even More. I do this every Tuesday. Uh, when I'm in town and not traveling, which is almost every Tuesday now since we're all, um, we're all part of this really new, uh, new, new. <laughs> Have a great day. All right, bye-bye. Tearing the end off. <laughs>